Florence and the Machine song, Only If For A Night, was written after their lead singer claimed she had a real-life run-in with the ghost of her deceased grandmother. True story. Today for New Music Monday, we're going to check out the brand new album from Florence and the Machine, and it's called How Big, How Blue, How Beautiful. Now this is the group's first album in about three years, and her first since Florence's well-publicized nervous breakdown that apparently made her want to go in a different direction musically. Getting the guy who produced Bjork's fantastic homogenic record was definitely a step in the right direction, as he clearly sees things through a very cool musical lens. This record kicks off with a ton of promise. The opening track is just fantastic, and it really made me excited to hear the rest of this album. The song does run out of steam near the end, but honestly, it's a good enough track that that can be forgiven. I was honestly surprised with how much I enjoyed this album, and I was really looking forward to the rest of the 48 minutes. But little did I know that those 48 minutes would feel like an eternity, and not in a good way. In almost every case, the song runs over 4 minutes, but to be honest, it really shouldn't run over 3. It gets boring pretty quickly. The reality with the second track is that it's nothing more than a crowd sing-along masquerading as a real track on this album. Outside of a live setting, this song offers nothing. Then you have the title track, which is basically a 90s collective soul single with a female singer and a horn section. There's rarely been a song I wanted to turn off so quickly. The way the song plays out points to one of the biggest problems on this album. There's no soul to it, there's no feel to it, there's no continuity or flow anywhere on the song or this album. This is really a record that's in an identity crisis. It doesn't know what it wants to be. Country, cool, future rock, electronic tinge. It tries so many things and it does none of them well. While some artists can pull this off, this is not one of those cases at all. They pretty much all try as hard as they can, but they just come up short. It's disorganized noise and it really doesn't sound good. But it's the song Queen of Peace that really shows the biggest problem with this album and really what this album's all about. It's trying way too hard to be something it's not. They're just trying to force these moments of impact, these moments of cool, things that they'll highlight with pyro and live performances, but again, when there's not a huge crowd there, these songs just fall flat. The last track on the album, Mother, exemplifies this to a T. It's got this great feel going to it, it's got a great mood all around, and then they force this huge chorus on it that just sounds awkward. It just slams into it out of nowhere, it's completely unnecessary, and it really ruins the song, and that's true of many songs on this album. Oh, and for the record, just because you have horns on a song doesn't make it intrinsically more powerful. And then you've got songs like Various Storms and Saints, which is basically a really bad version of the sound and tone the Cowboy Junkies have perfected. And it's almost embarrassingly bad when you get to a track like St. Jude that really sounds like two or three other songs on the same album. Could it be more ironic that they call out St. Jude the patron saint of lost causes? Because that's exactly what this album is. Most of these songs are just so poorly designed that they end up going nowhere, or when they're over, you just sort of shrug your shoulders and say, okay, and hope that the next song might offer something a little bit more interesting. I blame the producers and engineers on this album just as much as I do the band for the outright mediocrity you get all across. The production team on this album should never be allowed in a studio again because the unnecessary and outright poor choices that they make for the band, they're just inexcusable. This record just has no idea what it wants to be. And it ends up just being a giant sonic mess that leaves you wanting that wasted 48 minutes of your life back. But the band is to blame here as well, because these songs are never intimate enough that you can really connect with them emotionally, but even when they get big, they're not powerful enough to engage you or make you enjoy them. The songs just sort of occupy that awkward space in between and end up exhausting you with a stream of mediocrity and less. I just can't convey how disappointed I was in this album. The opening song was so good. I loved it. And I was just stunned by how boring and aimless the remainder of the album was. In the end, the band actually does you the favor of summing up this entire album with one song title, Long and Lost. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you dug it. Hop down in the comments and let me know what you think of the new Florence and the Machine record. As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here, and I'll see you guys again next time. Hey!